one of the biggest structural problems that we have is unemployment and especially youth unemployment. And it's easy even with the best of efforts to be, for all our efforts, to be no more than a drop in the ocean when you consider that uh, literally almost two million uh, new young people come into the job market every year. Uh, this is the equivalent of the population of some small countries here in Africa and elsewhere. We absolutely must create good paying jobs and employment opportunities for our young people. For those already in the labor market today and the ones who will join tomorrow, this is a task that is complicated by numerous employability issues, including the mismatch, as we've heard uh, from a few speakers, between skills and good jobs. Uh, the most obvious uh, are some of the new skill sets that are required today in commerce, in industry, in the services and the professions, especially those brought about by the changes in the digital economy. Along the same lines, job losses on account of digitalization require reskilling for relevant opportunities. I was reading uh, recently about 3D or additive manufacturing as they call it. And this is a, a good example of how, you know, uh, some of the jobs that were considered low cost are threatened today. You know, and these jobs provided opportunities in the years gone by in the developed economies of the world. But today, with 3D manufacturing, they're no longer available. But uh, th there was uh, there, there's a comment, I think it was John Hart of the MIT, who said that, look, yeah, we're still learning what 3D manufacturing can do today. The convergence of digital design, the internet, and cost automation is certain to open up all sorts of new opportunities. All that it will do in the future is something we don't know yet. But we know, one thing we know, is that whatever those challenges may be, clearly they are fresh opportunities. COVID-19 has added a bit of urgency also to the situation that we found ourselves in because it's irreversibly altered the way that we work, we learn, and we play. But all of these are new opportunities. And I think that young people in Nigeria in particular see those new opportunities. And time and time again, as I talk to young people, it's very evident that as far as they are concerned, these are challenges to be met. Frankly, I have not come across one young person who didn't have some ideas. I mean, the question, of course, always is how are we going to fund those ideas or how are we going to advance those ideas? Young people are just incredibly creative. I was talking the other day to a group of young Nigerians who were saying, who were talking about uh, digital currencies, Bitcoin, and all of that and how practically everyone is involved in this whole blockchain experience today in one way or the other. So there's no question at all about the enthusiasm, about the energy, about the creativity of our young people and their ability to try out anything and, and dare even what would seem uh, to be difficult. So the Nigerian Jubilee Fellows Program for which we are gathered today is important, especially as it fits into some of the efforts that we're making as a government, uh, some of the initiatives of the administration to comprehensively address youth unemployment. And this is a big challenge, it's been pointed out already, it's a massive challenge. But the, our ongoing efforts include the Empire Scheme, I'm sure some uh, remember the Empire Scheme, which recruits young graduates and places them in agricultural health and education intervention schemes in local communities around the country. The NPA also has a non-graduate scheme focused on technical skills and IT education. And the president has recently approved the expansion of the NPA program from 500,000 beneficiaries to 1 million uh, beneficiaries. We also have uh, the, 
We also have the 75 billion youth fund in the Ministry of uh, Youth and Sports. This is to provide credit and support for young entrepreneurs and professionals. I think it's in phases of 25 billion every year and that has already kicked off. Lamin also spoke a few minutes ago about the $500 million AFDB Technology and Innovation Fund. Also under our Economic Sustainability Plan, as um, many might know, this is designed specifically to protect existing jobs, to create new ones, and to promote local production. Our agricultural, housing, and solar power programs already employ, and we expect will employ uh, tens of thousands of people to ensure food security uh, and deliver affordable homes and new power connections. I'm particularly excited about the solar, uh, about the solar connections, the, uh, the renewable energy uh, initiatives under the scheme. Uh, several uh, companies that run by, very, by many young people have applied for this scheme and several already getting the credit that they require to be able to participate in this, uh, in this program. So the Nigeria uh, Jubilee Fellows Program is in very good company a new and bold addition to an existing suite of large-scale, big-impact programs that will rewrite the narrative as it relates to jobs, skills, and employment in Nigeria. As we've heard, the, the program will create uh, internship opportunities for young Nigerians who have recently concluded the National Youth Service Corps. These are fully paid internships that will last for 12 months and will be in reputable private and public sector organizations across the country. The idea will be for the participants to gain relevant career and life skills that will enable them transition seamlessly from professional business or public sector careers while also learning, uh, while also earning a living uh, along the way. So it's our belief that this program will bridge the gap between the skills and capabilities of recent graduates and uh, the human resource demands of the, of the labor market, connecting graduates with opportunities to earn as they learn and to gain uh, required experience. At the end of each cohort, uh, the fellows should have gained the required experience and skills that they can either use immediately or build on subsequently. So the program is named in honor of the 60th anniversary of Nigeria's independence. And the plan is to start with 20,000 fellows in this first year of the program. So this is 20,000 fresh opportunities that will be paid for as, uh, uh, by, by this internship program. We're looking forward to the president uh, formally launching the program shortly. I'd like to especially appreciate the UNDP, uh, Mohamed Yahya, or Mo, as we call him, and the European Union, particularly uh, Ketil Cal uh, Carlson, Mo and Ketil in particular, uh, for their personal commitment uh, in helping to make the Jubilee Fellows Program a reality. I'm putting your people to work on this initiative and providing the funding, along with the federal government, for the design and takeoff. The quality of implementation will be key to the success of the Jubilee Fellows Program. Uh, we are resolute in our determination to make uh, the needed difference and to rebuild the confidence of our young people in the ability of their government to rise to the occasion and guarantee a future that is better and more prosperous than the past. So on this note, let me once again thank everyone who has been involved in the planning, design and implementation of the program as we prepare for the formal launch of the program by Mr. President. I urge the private sector leaders who are present here and captains of industry uh, and our development partners and the diplomatic community to support this program uh, aimed at equipping young Nigerians with skills and experience required for uh, the workplace of the 21st century. I thank you all very much for participating in this, and we certainly look forward uh, to the early reports of the great successes that we expect from this program. Thank you very much.